Hi, Erica. Hi, how are you? Very good. How are you? Good. I'm just I'm full so screen. excited to talk to you. Oh, yeah, I'm excited to talk to you too. <laughs> so tell me, um, you came from Chicago. Um, were you born and raised there? Yep, born and raised in Chicago. All my family is there. So I grew up there, went to college in Chicago too. So born and raised did Chicago. Did you study music for at college? I did. I actually, um, after high school, I wanted to move out here to Los Angeles and pursue music full time. But my parents were really strict about you have to go to college, you have to get your education, have something to fall back on. Um, so, you know, it just made the most sense to me to major in vocal performance since I wanted to be a singer. Um, and it turned out to be an opera program. So I had never sung opera before until a couple months before my audition. So um, I just prepared for the audition a couple months in advance. And my first audition was at Northwestern University um, outside Chicago, and I got in early decision as a soprano, having like never sung opera before. That's amazing. Uh, so yeah, that's what I, I started doing that, and then about a year into it, I was like, well, I know I don't want to be an opera singer, so um, I ended up getting a degree in English and a minor in French and uh, doing all my music on the side, so... Wow. So you knew right out of high school you wanted to be an artist? Yeah. I mean, really, since the age of 11 or 12, I've just had that mindset. I knew I wanted to be a recording artist and really haven't looked back. So I knew at a very young age, and I feel like that's really rare to be that so passionate rare. about something, you know? So, so when did you decide to change your name to uh, Fatal, like from Roger? Right. <laughs> yeah, Roger to Fatal. A <laughs> uh, little bit of a switch. Um... I have used Roger up until this demo, so I just felt, you know, I to write my own music. I mean, up until that point, I'd been doing, you know, I did tons of Whitney Houston covers. That's how I first got started, and just singing covers of other artists. So this was my first time presenting myself as an artist, and um, I really wanted to get away from being the ballad queen, which I was, you know, for the years previously. And um, just the tone of the music where it headed, uh, it just has a very sort of empowered, confident, self-assured, self-assuredness to it. And I wanted a name that reflected that, um, something that was still me, Erica, you know, at the heart of the music, but uh, something that was a little more aggressive and had a little bit more of a punch to it. So uh, I thought Fatal worked perfectly and going so well with the whole Fon Fatal song, which was the first song that we did and keeping amazing, with- amazing, by the way. I love it. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, so, keeping with the whole sort of French glamour, sultry vibe, so. You talked about yourself being a ballad queen beforehand. Is that when mm -hmm. you worked with David Foster? Yes, How exactly. How did that come about? You won a contest? I did, yeah. Um, there was a contest through this website called NameDrop.com, and I just submitted an a cappella version of me singing, and I'm telling you, I'm not going from Dreamgirls, <laughs> and uh, kind of forgot about it. And then a few weeks later, um, yeah, I got the call that, are you available tomorrow to come sing with David Foster in concert? So, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, because he's someone that I always dreamed of working with one day because he's worked with all of my favorite divas. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it was incredible. He was such a nice guy, extremely complimentary. And, um, you know, it's just kind of funny the fact that he works with so many amazing singers that you're up there and you're like singing your heart out. And after you're done, he's like, okay, yeah, really good. All right. So now we're going to do this. Like he's so used to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And to you, it's like amazing experience, like first in a lifetime. Okay. Oh my gosh, yeah, absolutely amazing. Um, but I guess also at the same time, it's like, I know I've known I wanted to do this for so long that it's like I've always had that goal in mind. So when I'm doing it, it's like, okay, this feels right. I should be with David Foster singing with him. <laughs> but it is kind of surreal at the same time. But um, yeah, it was really at that point, I mean, like I said, an absolutely amazing experience and, you know, working with so many of those amazing artists that were there with him that night. But it really made me realize that I didn't want to 
do that the rest of my life. You know, I didn't want to be up there in the beautiful gown singing uh, someone else's songs, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I really felt passionate about writing my own material and having it be a little harder edged, a little more aggressive, not just ballads. I knew I wanted to do more pop things. So um, I think that that experience was definitely the turning point. Um, at the same time, it was really great because it gives you a, an immediate sense of legitimacy um, within the industry, you know, the fact that you've gotten to work with him, but at the same time, it also was the turning point that I could either go down this road or down this other one, which is even more difficult, <laughs> uh, wanting to do, you know, pop music, but, you know, it just felt right, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited with uh, where it's going. Did you decide to leave him and then come to LA? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, How did that was, decision come about? Well, you know, like I said, it was such a long, uh, something that was in the process for so long, um, you know, since I wanted to move out here after high school. Um, so it was just the right time. I had just graduated from college and, um, you know, sort of laid the foundation in Chicago first. I didn't want to move out to LA, not knowing anyone, not having anything set up, no foundation whatsoever. And uh, I feel like it's a, a city that you can very easily get caught up in things and uh, lose track a little bit. So um, I, yeah, just, you know, I had a, an attorney out here and he um, set me up with Peter Fengard. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so I had the whole deal with Peter worked out, um, for us to do this demo together. So that was, uh, at the point that I decided, okay, now I have a project to work on, so now's the perfect time to move out to L.A. And he's worked with, like, the Pussycat Dolls, JoJo. Mm -hmm. That's big. That's huge. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So, I mean, it was, you know, very intimidating for me, the fact that I had been um, had never really taken my ideas on paper and, uh, transform them into an actual song. Um, so, you know, I'm coming in with my little notebook of song ideas and singing him things. I'm like, I don't know if this is good or if this is the worst thing he's ever heard. <laughs> and, you know, he's also Diane Warren's main producer. And Diane oh, wow. Warren is, you know, one of the most prolific songwriters. So it was a lot of pressure. But luckily, you know, we just got along so well. And he really liked my ideas. And, uh, you know, it was just really easy. So Did he co-write with you or did he just produce? Uh, we did both. Um, for some of the songs, like Femme Fatale was the first song we did together. And that one I had pretty much already written. And I had like the top line melody for it. So I just sang that for him and he really liked it. And um, he created the production around it. Uh, so we did a few songs like that. And then we also just co-wrote from the ground up, um, liquid. We did that way. So, um, and I'm actually watching Peter's cat this weekend too. So <laughs> still um, stay fresh. How did whipped come about? Cause that's one of my favorite songs by you. I love it. The chorus is just catchy. I love it. Thank you. Um, yeah, that one I had, it actually started off my vocal coach in Chicago. We were just sort of joking around and saying how we need to do a song called whipped. Uh, for all the boys out there, you know, the way they need to treat their women and uh, putting them first. And, you know, we were just being sassy in our voice lesson. Um, and then I just came up with that hook, the W-H-I-P-P-E-D. And, um, yeah, it just went from there, and Peter really liked it. And then he came up with that awesome rockin' production and just took off from there. But... Uh, a modern day like Aretha Franklin, respect with like a little Kanye West flavor yeah, almost to I it. Totally so. see that vibe. Oh, I love it. I'm love so glad that. you like it. Yes, love that song. Um, so, where are you like right now in the industry? Like, what are you currently trying to achieve? What's your goal? Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, this first demo I think did a really great job as far as it being really the first introduction of me into the into the music business and really finding my sound and all of that. And now I want to take that and, you know, cre really hone in on my own unique sound and niche in the industry. So um, right now we're meeting with lots of different producers to try to find the right fit to do more material. 
um, to add to the package. And, um, you know, I've been performing all around L.A., which has been great. Uh, you know, the reception's been re really great, which is wonderful. Um, so right now, though, we're sort of putting the performance on the back burner for the most part to really focus on getting some more material together and um, hopefully making some hit songs. I totally awesome. see that in your future. Oh, I hope so. I hope you're right. <laughs> um, what's one question that you wish you would be asked in an interview? Oh, gosh. Um, that's a tough one. <laughs> I guess... I guess, uh, you know, a lot of it's just, you know, let's talk about the music, let's talk about where you're from, you know, the typical yeah. sort of bio questions, but, uh, you know, I guess I, I want people to know a little bit more about me, too, who I am, and, um, you know, I think people would be surprised that uh, I have an extremely sarcastic sense of humor. I love uh, Saturday absolutely humor. have the same sarcastic humor. That is Some people don't get it, too. And <laughs> yeah, the drier it is, the funnier I laugh. Okay, see, you're you're right up my street. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So I guess things things like that. Um, you know, what's something that nobody knows about you? I don't know, something along those lines. What's something nobody knows about you? Gosh. Um, <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. I, <laughs> see, I, I give you a question. I don't even I know. know how to answer it. <laughs> the problem. Um, Set yourself up. Yeah. Let's see. Well, I actually grew up an equestrian. Mm -hmm. um, which is a little odd. So I grew up in, in the horse stables, uh, <laughs> and I had a horse growing up, and I did horse shows all around the Midwest. And um, so that's a little uh, fact that nobody knows. And um, Exclusive. <laughs> yeah, there's an exclusive for you. Um, I have something else that's really boring and, and kind of uh, morose, but um, I have something called celiac disease, so I can't eat gluten, which is sort of, uh, you know, there's more awareness about that now. But so all of those good things like pasta, pizza, bread, all that oh stuff, God. I can't have. <laughs> so, that's um, yeah, that's, that's a little difficult. But, you know, the gluten-free stuff is getting much better. So, um, okay, yeah, it's a little celiac awareness for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is there one artist currently in the industry that you would wish to work with? Like, that's your top choice? I would say Beyonce. I think she's amazing. I mean, she's a beast on stage. Um, and she seems to have a very strong work ethic and is just sort of the consummate professional and does amazing music, obviously. So uh, I think it would make for a very cool sort of pop diva collaboration so um yeah it would be amazing to work with her and of course you know Whitney Houston was my biggest idol growing up so to have the opportunity to sing with her one day would you know I feel like I could die happy with her so well I really wish you good luck on everything Erica thank you, thank um, you so much no thank you so much I definitely see a, a bright future for you oh thank you very much bye I hope Erica you're... all right thank bye you. thank you